The problem is we have wicked politicians, wicked governors like Gavin Newsom that are passing immoral law. Do you know that Gavin Newsom destroyed San Francisco before he ever destroyed California? Gavin Newsom destroyed San Francisco years ago. Now he's destroying the state of California. And now what he's doing is he's telling you to put a mask on because he wants you to keep your mouth shut. That's what Gavin Newsom wants. Yeah. Okay. Gavin Newsom wants you running around with a diaper over your mouth so that you keep your mouth shut. Amen. It's not going to happen if you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, you ought to be opening up your mouth right. and crying out against the wickedness that's happening in San Francisco. Right. People are dying of drug overdoses. Children are getting molested and raped. Hard-hearted. 800,000 children go missing in America every single year. You can imagine what's happening to the children in the Tenderloin. You can imagine what's happening to the children that are staying in the buildings that are in the Tenderloin. You see what happens on the street, but I want you to imagine what's happening behind closed doors. This is a serious problem, and you need to do something about it. Don't rely on your politicians. Don't rely on Mayor London Breed. You need to do something about it. How do you do something about it? The first thing you can do is open up your Bible and start getting filled with the truth. Amen. Start opening your Bible and getting filled with the Spirit so you can get some boldness, so you can get some courage, so you can start speaking truth into your soul. Then you can start sharing it with others like we're doing. Hallelujah. You think this problem is going to get fixed overnight? You think this problem is going to get fixed because you think somebody else is going to handle it? No! You need to do something. You that call themselves a Christian. You that says you believe in Jesus. You that goes to church on Sunday. You need to do something. Jesus Christ said, I came not to call the righteous to repentance, but the sinner to repentance. Jesus is calling the sinners to repentance. Are you lying? You're a sinner. You need to be saved. You need to be forgiven. Are you cheating? Are you stealing? Are you addicted to Facebook? Are you addicted to your cell phone? You need to repent. That phone is like a drug. Most of you are more addicted to your phones than a heroin is, than a heroin addict is to heroin, or a cigarette smoker is to cigarettes. You know, I used to smoke five packs of cigarettes a day. I was like a walking chimney. Five packs of cigarettes. You're looking at a guy right now that used to smoke five packs of cigarettes a day. He used to smoke all kinds of chronic. And now Jesus has set me free. I got tired of killing my brain cells. I got tired of being stupid. I got tired of forgetting where I left my key. And God came in and he set me free. Oh, yeah. Jesus came in. He delivered me from my cigarette addiction. Amen. You know they put rat poison in those cigarettes and you keep cho you keep choking on them every day. Amen. It doesn't faze you, man. You tell somebody, hey, they put, they put rat poison in those cigarettes. Oh, yeah, I know. No big deal. I pay eight bucks a pack, man, to kill myself. Yeah. And I go to college. And what are they teaching you in college? What are they teaching you in school? If you got no common sense, Take a cancer sick to your mouth and puff on it. There's nothing good in that cigarette. That cigarette's going to kill you. Right. That cigarette's going to bring you to an early grave. Lung cancer, mouth cancer. You ever seen somebody die of cancer? Man, it is a horrible death. 
it is horrible to watch somebody die of cancer. You know Rush Limbaugh. Rush oh, Limbaugh yeah. just died of cancer. Oh, yeah. I don't know whether or not he was oh, a smoker. Yeah. I've seen pictures Rush where he had a cigar yeah. in his mouth. The Bible says the wages of your cigarette smoking, the wages of your alcohol drinking, the wages of your pornography, the wages of your sin is death. You are going to die one day. Yes, we're all going to die. That's true. See, he even knows. We're all going to die. That's true. Now, where will you go when you die? That's the question. Where will you go when you die? You're either going to heaven, where most people do not go, or you're going to hell, where most people do go. Now, why do most people go to hell? Because when God puts a street preacher on the corner to give you the message of salvation, Turn to Jesus. you Turn away reject from Satan. It. You deny it. You reject so great a salvation. Hey. God is the God of miracles. God is the God that changes the hearts. I know it, brother. I know the feeling. <laughs> That's what love is. Love is a change of heart. Love is Jesus Christ coming into your life, changing your heart, taking out that heart of stone, putting in a heart of flesh, and changing your mind, changing your will, changing your actions. That is repentance, my friends. Repentance comes from the Greek word metanoia which is the changing of your mind. You go from a self-centered life to a God-centered life. Follow the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. And you will be saved. Man, what's going on, y'all? Uh, man, God is good. Praise God. Uh, yeah, I just got a quick testimony, you know, some real fast. Uh, at 11, 12 years old, you know, I'm involved in gangs. I'm doing drugs. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking. I'm smoking. You know, uh, I'm fighting. You know, as I get older, you know, things get a little deeper for me. You know, I start using meth. I start doing heroin. I start doing the whole nine. Uh, I'm addicted to everything. You know, I'm drinking every day. And, uh... I'm doing robbery, you know, I started getting to heavier crimes, and, man, I thought that was my life, you know, I, I didn't think there was nothing else, you know, I thought that was it, you know, just being in jail, you know, in a, in a jail cell 23 hours a day, you know, and, man, I thought that was it, you know, I thought there was no other life, and, uh, you know, someone told me about Jesus, and I didn't... You know, I just think he helped me, you know. I was addicted to all these drugs. I was, you know, in love with the with, with the money. I was in love with the drugs. And, you know, I hurt so much people. I destroyed so much family. I didn't think, I didn't think there was, uh, nobody can help me. And, uh, so I kept going about my life, you know, and I kept getting, you know, sitting in the county jail with nine felonies, felonies on me, not even tripping, you know. And, you know, still doing the drugs, you know, still running through, you know, through the streets, you know, and, you know, and on everything, you know, and so I hit rock bottom till I was tired of being tired, till I was exhausted, you know, I was at my lowest point, and I was like, you know what, I'm tired, you know, I'm gonna I'm give, I'm gonna open this Bible up and I'm gonna give it a chance. Ever since that day, I never went back, man. All my chains been broken, you know. Every addiction has been broken, you know. So, man, there's power in the name of Jesus. With the Holy Spirit, you can do anything, you know. He, he, any sins you've done, they're forgiven, you know. You're washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, but I came to a repentance, you know. And you know, I confess all my sins to God. 
I was really, you know, I made a 180 and I was really sorry and remorseful for the things I've done. And man, since that day, man, he changed me, you know. He changed me. Ways, man, I feel like sometimes I wake up and I feel like I gotta pinch myself. It feels like a dream, you know. But since that day, man, I've been set free. He can set you free from anything that you addicted to. You know, that be with lust, drugs, you know, gambling, whatever it may be. You know, he can break. He can break those chains. If he broke it for he broke those chains for me, he can break it for you. So man, God is good, man. God is good. You know, he loves you and he's waiting for you to uh make that step and come to him. Oh yeah, I could go a little bit, yeah. God is so desperate for your soul. He died on the cross for you and shed off his blood and rose again on the third day to make you in right standing with God. It is by no coincidence you're hearing this message today. Your soul must be spared from hell. The blood of Jesus purchases the penalty, pays off the penalty of the crimes that you've committed against God, whether that's lust, pornography, homosexuality, like I used to be in. So be set free by Jesus today. Praise the Lord. If you do not turn to Jesus, your descendants will curse you. Trust me on that one. But if you turn them to Jesus, you will be blessed. And so as your sons and daughters will be blessed, because they will know how to get set free from sin, from Satan, and the self. Praise the Lord. Anyone else want to come? Yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus and heaven above. The Lord tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Who who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Porque tanto amó Dios al mundo que dio a su hijo y el hijito para que todo el que cree en él no perezca, sino que tenga vida eterna. Porque Dios no envió a su hijo al mundo para que dañara al mundo, pero al mundo a través de él puede salvarse. Does that make sense? All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know, I used to be addicted to heroin, alcohol, cigarettes, inappropriate videos on the internet. I used to be addicted to it all. And it wasn't until I humbled myself before God. You see, God hates pride. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to God. God hates pride. The word tells us that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. If you don't hate evil, it's because you don't fear God. And if you don't fear God, it means you have no wisdom. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverted mouth God hates. That's what it means to fear the Lord. God hates pride, but he gives grace to the lowly. Because Jesus himself was lowly and meek at heart. Matthew 11:28 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am lowly and meek at heart. I am humble and gentle at heart. This is Jesus speaking. And you will find rest. You will find rest for your soul. For my burden is easy and my yoke is light. 
you have to humble yourself. The proud and those who mock will be mocked by God. God himself said, he said, because you laughed when I stretched out my hand, I tried to counsel you, show you the way of life and eternal salvation. And you shrugged your shoulders, you rolled your eyes, you snickered, you giggled and walked along. God said he's also going to mock when your fear comes. You don't believe me? Read Proverbs 1. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. When your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish take a hold on you, then you're going to call on God, but he says he will not answer you. You will seek him bright and early, and you will not find him. Because you spurned all the counsel of the Lord, you will not listen to any of his advice. Therefore, it says you will eat the fruit of your own ways, meaning you will reap what you sow. Galatians 6, 7, God is not mocked, for whatever a man or woman sows, that he or she will also reap. She or he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. That means you become perverted and reprobate, and you think it's okay to murder children. Perverse, reprobate corrupt but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life eternal life God is not mocked what you glory in will be your shame in the vanity of your mind you think it intelligent to mock the gospel and it will resonate and eternity for your shame, eternal shame and contempt. You don't believe me? Read Daniel 10. Everyone is going to rise from their graves to judgment, some to everlasting life, and the rest to everlasting shame and contempt. of it. Don't be in bondage to your flesh. It's not your intelligence or science or your tolerance for other religions that causes you to spurn the gospel. It is your flesh. It is the lust of your eyes. It is the lust of the heart. And it is pride. Lust and pride keep you from Jesus, not your intelligence. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that God has given you that mind, which is very intelligent, actually, to reason. He says in Isaiah, come now, let us reason together. I made you smart specifically so I could communicate to you. I made you smart so you could reason with your creator. It is not smart to shrug your shoulders and not use that intellect that God has given you.
God says in Isaiah 1, 18, inspired by the Holy Spirit, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. God wants to reason with you. He says, for your sins, repentance. There's a false gospel that's going out. The blood of Jesus. The people will live in sin and say, well, Jesus loves. As if to say sin is okay, you will not go to hell. That's a false gospel from Satan because he hates you. Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And guess what? Many people hated Jesus. The same people who says, oh, Jesus would wear a mask. Jesus would not condemn or judge that have not read the Bible. It's a different Jesus that cannot save them. Read the Bible. How much time do you spend watching Netflix and YouTube? I watch YouTube too, that's okay, a little bit. But read your Bible. Go home, pray. Ask God even right now, is, he, is what he's saying true? Am I just an accident? Is that what science says? Did anybody here believe in science? I'm not going to shame you. I'm just going to give you some science. Nobody? Okay, that's good. There is good science, but there's a lot of bad science. But that's not the issue. Even though they give you evidence, scientific evidence of our creation, 
The human heart would do away with that evidence because of lust. It would literally choose the less intelligent thing because of the flesh. For example, I used to be addicted to heroin. And I knew in my intellect that it was bad. It could kill me. It was destroying me. It was breaking my mother's heart. But because of my flesh, I said, forget that. I put my intelligence to the side. I put my reason to the side. I cast my moral compass to the side. I cast the voice of the Lord to the side because of our flesh. You see, it's not your intellect that keeps you from Christ. It is the flesh. It is lust. It is pride. But God understands their temptations. He is gracious. He is merciful. And so he says he will free you from the bondage to flesh. He will free you from addiction to sin. God bless you, young woman. If you read the Bible, you'll be more sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So the more of God's Spirit you want, read more Bible. Pray more. Talk to God. That's when we pray. Hear from God. That's when we read the Bible. Can you imagine anything better than being in communion with God? Could you have a more intelligent conversation than talking to God? Or could you get more wise advice than hearing from God? The Word of God says, Call everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters, and him that has no money, come ye, buy, and eat. Yes, Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? And you labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear. That means humble yourself. Pay attention. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. A covenant is a promise. It's an oath that God will not break. A covenant. Hallelujah. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy. God will have mercy upon you. Return to the Lord. Return. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts.